Yesterday on this show, I talked about the latest news that had developed out of the Chris Dorner manhunt. As we all know, he's now presumed to be dead. That's not the part that surprises me. Even Dorner himself knew it wouldn't end well for him. But what does surprise me, however, is how he died. Check this out. In the middle of Big Bear Forest, the cabin Dorner was allegedly in was set ablaze and left to burn for hours. At first, the media was speculating that it was Dorner himself who had set the fire. But then I heard this leaked audio from two different police scanners that were tracing him. <laughs> Yes, you just heard that correctly. Police saying burn it down, follow through with the burn order. I don't know about you, but it seems to me like the police set out to burn this man alive. But of course, that's not what the police department's saying. Check it out. I can tell you that it was not on purpose. We did not intentionally burn down that cabin to get Mr. Dorner out. The tear gas canisters that we used First off, we used a presence when we showed up. Secondly, we used a cold tear gas. Then we used, sec the next tear gas was that that was uh, pyrotechnic. Does generate a lot of heat. Uh, we in introduced those canisters into the residence and a fire erupted. So what is really going on here and why are people simply questioning the police line being attacked? To join me now to give his take is Max Blumenthal investigative journalist and author of the recent alternate article entitled how law enforcement and media covered up the plan to burn Christopher Dorner alive. Max, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So we just heard the audio. We heard what the police department saying you outline it very well in your article, but what's really going on here? Well, I was listening to the police scanners at the time, so I heard them say, let's deploy the burners. Uh, I heard the uh, open transmissions on KCAL 9 on Los Angeles that you played, uh, let's burn this MFR. They're basically saying, let's burn the suspect alive. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the uh, San, Bernardino, San Bernardino County sheriffs are uh, behaving like Groucho Marxists right now because it was Groucho Marx who said, who are you going to believe, me or your two lion eyes? We know that they intended to burn Chris Dorner alive in the cabin, denying him any due process, or at least denying the possibility um, that he could have been taken alive. And by the way, this is a man who made um, serious allegations against the LAPD um, and could have testified to them. So they um, apparently killed him. I was listening at the time. And at the same time, I was watching CNN, monitoring media, uh, monitoring local newspapers like the Riverside Press Enterprise, um, like um, KABC, the local LA affiliate, saying that we will not tweet direct details of the standoff under the request of the San Bernardino County Sheriff. So I saw kind of a media self-censorship, and still we've seen no serious investigation by the mainstream media right. into how the fire was started. In fact, um, the Sheriff's Department has lied to the Los Angeles Times and claimed that there was a sustained firefight, a constant barrage of gunfire coming from Dorner. Now, I listened to those scanners, and the only report of any gunfire from inside the cabin was a single shot right after the burners were deployed, then ammo exploding inside from the heat, meaning probably Dorner had died and his store of ammo was blowing up. So they're lying, and the media is not investigating, and I consider this to be a cover-up. Right. Right, absolutely. Uh, you know, why, let's take it back to the live feeds and kind of that self-censorship. Why do you think that the media, you know, they were told obviously from the police, turn off the feeds, stop uh, reporting on this. Why do you think they complied? Um, do you agree with that decision? Yeah, I mean, I haven't spoken to any of the reporters or editors who made this decision, but it seems to me there's a culture in American mainstream media of deference to power and we can see it here at the Chris Dorner standoff. We can also see it in the fact that the New York Times and other major outlets um, held uh, details of the legal memo that was leaked uh, from the Obama administration detailing uh, the Obama administration's secret assassination program which is, uh, authorized the killing of American citizens. So we have a problem here that was exposed at Big Bear on a wintry mountain where Chris Dorner burned alive of 
um, poli a, a culture of impunity among the police and a culture of deference to um, that culture among the media. There's um, certainly, no one really came out looking good from this. There certainly is a culture of cover-up complicity with the media, uh, deference to the political establishment, whatever they say. But what does this say about their complicity with the cover-up of this? I mean, and not only that, Max, but they're also going as far as to attacking anyone who's saying, look, obviously I heard the police scanner. They're saying let's burn this mother effer. They're saying let's deploy the burners. They're calling people conspiracy theorists. They're even saying, you know, you're a Chris Dorner apologist, a fan. If you're simply questioning what they're saying, what do you think about that? Yeah, you're referring to the website BuzzFeed, which is a, is a major uh, news, news blog, uh, online news source, um, which has painted people who are raising serious questions about how Dorner was killed, um, conspiracy theorists, and um, sort of conflating them with people who are cheering for Dorner. And this is really disturbing and reinforces uh, sort of the law enforcement status quo narrative and ultimately reinforces the police culture of impunity uh, thereby putting Americans in danger. Um, so I think uh, these people, um, you know, who are trying to uh, marginalize people like me who just simply listened to the transmissions, um, listened to the police scanners and heard what was clearly a plan to burn Dorner alive as conspiracy theorists are doing a major disservice. But, you know, I really think it's up to the mainstream media, especially the LA Times, um, to investigate what I consider to be the central story here, which is how that fire started. Mm. And they're not doing it. I was on HuffPost Live yesterday with one of the LA Times reporters leading um, the reporting on Dorner, and he promised to get to the bottom of, of it. I've seen nothing so far, and I've seen nothing to challenge the lies of the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department. So this is just, it's just a very dangerous scenario. Right, and I mean, even if one reporter says, you know, he's committed to find the truth, of course, the top-down establishment of that organization might prevent that from happening. But I, I wanted to talk to you about just the overzealous response from the get-go. I mean, almost launching surveillance drone, gunning down two cars on mere suspicion, and now, you know, burning alive a suspect in a heavily forested area, letting this fire blaze for hours. What do you think about this overzealous, aggressive response just to find one person? Well, I listened uh, to the scanners as the, the sheriff's deputies who had surrounded the cabin and isolated the media from the area um, carefully managed the fire. Um, they, had, they, they, they had clear details, I think through remote-controlled reconnaissance vehicles um, that initially ripped down the walls of the cabin on how the fire was progressing. And they understood that it had burned down the first floor, and then they wondered if Dorner was hiding in the basement. So they wanted to make sure it would burn him there if he was hiding there. They wondered what materials the basement ceiling were made out of, et cetera. Um, and they were deeply worried that this fire could spread into the surrounding woods. I mean, if this had been summertime in L.A., I can pretty right. much guarantee, because I lived there for five years, there would have been a wildfire. What it reminds me of, and the sheriffs were lucky this time, is the bombing of the MOVE compound, the radical black nationalist cult in Philadelphia. By the Philadelphia Police Department in 1986, they dropped C4 on a row house in West Philadelphia and burned 65 other uh, row houses in the area. It was just a huge disaster. And so what we just see the police culture of impunity and recklessness playing out again and again. This is just a window into something that people in Los Angeles and people in the inner city have to deal with every day. And the media, with its dereliction of duty, is allowing it to essentially continue unchecked. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on, shedding a light. We definitely need to keep asking questions, demanding answers. Max Blumenthal, investigative journalist at Alternet. Thanks a lot.